England's players at the final whistle last night got a bit of a mixed reaction, I think it's uh, diplomatic to say, from their fans. But understandably, the Slovenian fans went crazy. Oh, they were happy. As did the players mm. celebrating. Yeah, it's an achievement. It certainly it? is. Qualification for the last 16. We caught up with Darren Bent yesterday and he said he'd been keeping in touch with our next guest, the Slovenian midfielder, Timmy Max Elsnick, their old teammates from Derby County. And uh, we're delighted to say Timmy joins us now. Hi, Timmy. Hello. How are you guys? Yeah, yeah well, good, first thanks. off, congratulations. Mm, uh, we could so. see the jubilation in, in the you. camp. Um, I mean, it's job done. That's you, you guys wanted to qualify and you did it. Yeah, uh, obviously, just qualifying for the Euros was a big uh, success and a uh, big celebration for our country. Uh, then, obviously, when the, the draw happened for the groups, uh, we did end up in a, quite a tough group and... Uh, no one really believed in us that we can do anything special. Uh, all the teams are rated way higher than us, uh, have way bigger player than us, players than us. Uh, but uh, we're a team, what can I say? And uh, we didn't give up and uh, we believed in ourselves. And yeah, we managed to get through. It's true, if it wasn't for one of your coach's bookings, you would yellow cards, you would have finished second. I, I don't even know what are the rules exactly for this. There's been a couple of different scenarios. They were saying um, some FIFA rankings, the qualifier rankings. Uh, I don't know how they look at uh, between us and Denmark. Uh, someone even said to me in the case, the last game would be played against Denmark head to head. And we would end up the same. We would have like a penalty shootout. So I, I don't know if that's <laughs> it's amazing isn't it? or not, but... Yeah, uh, what are the chances that everything is the same, you know, goal difference. Uh, so at the end, I think uh, it doesn't really matter which position you end up because all the opponents uh, in the knockout stages are going to be uh, obviously good. So, uh, yeah, I you think England also is going to have a tough opponent. Sure. I mean, you don't know yet who you'll be playing. It, it, could, be, it could be Portugal, couldn't it? That's a possibility, which won't be easy because they've been playing pretty well so far. Yeah, but we played against them in March. We beat them 2-0, so... Oh, that's good. Good. Maybe, that was a friendly, maybe. wasn't it, I think? Yeah. It was a friendly, yeah, 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 yeah. in uh, in Ljubljana. Uh, I even scored in that game. Wow. Um, not, that, not everyone played, but uh, Ronaldo was there. And, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a, a like a holiday uh, for Slovenia, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo coming to Ljubljana yeah. to play. Uh, so, yeah, we, we know Portugal a little bit. Um but, yeah, we, we still need to wait for the other group to finish. Yeah, good omen, though, isn't it? Yeah, Having very, them very much yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And we'll come on to England, but we should also congratulate your team on the way you defended. I mean, it was tremendous, really. I mean, you didn't allow England Thank you. virtually anything, really. A couple of moments in the match. Yeah, uh, first half, I think it was uh, a bit more open. We we had some spells with, with a bit of possession, uh, a couple of counterattacks. Uh, we could maybe do a bit better and... Uh, go for goal but uh yeah in the second half uh you know it, because the draw was good enough for us so there was no point of us being a bit more open uh, attacking uh, but yeah not a lot of teams can survive 45 minutes like that uh obviously it helps when you have one of the best keepers in the world uh mm. but yeah uh, as a small country you know from the first to the last player we all have to do uh give everything on the defensive end and uh just sacrifice for the sake of the team. And uh, that's what we did. You know, yeah, it, it was not easy physically, but uh, yeah, we managed well to to defend the, the point that uh, got us through in the end. We uh, we know you keep in touch with English football having and played here for Swindon and Derby, etc. So there was a lot of talk before the game that there was going to be a reset. It was going to be a higher tempo. This was going to be a different England from maybe the first couple of games. What was it like on the field? It seemed to us from an England point of view that... The tempo wasn't up that much. There was a few little, a few little moments when it was the disallowed goal, and towards the end of the game when Cole Palmer had that shot, at Jan Oblak. But beyond that, what did you make of it? Were you surprised at England's performance? Uh, no, I wasn't really surprised. We we saw their two games. Uh, we knew what to expect. Uh, basically, they didn't change a lot. Uh, the first eleven. Um, but yeah, we are maybe the one opponent you don't really want to to play against because of uh, what was good enough for us, and we just defended low block uh, most of the time. Uh, so 
it's it's always hard to to get through you know even if you have uh, top quality players when one team defends uh, so deep and so well it's 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 really hard to score you know if if they would play maybe a better opponent a bit more open game maybe england would uh, would score goals uh, but this way it was harder for them um but yeah the tempo was not not really that high uh physically i felt uh, really good uh not a problem at all uh running against uh, mm. Bellingham's and uh, Rice and uh, Gallagher in the first half especially. Um, but when they made the substitutions, Timmy, uh, were you surprised they weren't made a little bit earlier? Did you feel that when they did make the changes, when Palmer came on, mm. I mean, Gordon didn't get very long, but the tempo was up a little bit there, some fresh legs. Were you surprised maybe they didn't do that earlier? <clears throat> yeah, Palmer, definitely, he caused us some problems. Um, he's a very specific player and... Um, for us, luckily, yeah, it didn't happen earlier because also our left back was on a booking uh, from early on. And, uh, you know, going 1v1 against him every time, he has to be careful. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, luckily Palmer came on. I don't know how long it was left, but um, in, in my opinion, it was good that it was not earlier. Uh, it definitely helped us because when he came on, you know, and obviously our level uh, level of energy drops. It's hard to to be at that level for ninety plus minutes, mm. uh, and then there's more spaces. So yeah, when the, they bring in fresh players with this quality, it's uh, it's uh, really hard to to control them. And uh, obviously, they have a point to prove. Uh, they've been waiting for two two games now to get the chance, and uh, we all know what he's capable of. Uh, him and Gordon, and um, I think they did well. And um, I think they can help this English team a lot, to be honest. Pre-match, when you were discussing the game, did, did you fear anything that England didn't actually do? Did you think, so, I hope they don't do this, or I hope they don't do that, and they didn't? Or did they, you've already said they pretty much did what you thought they'd do? Yeah, no, they, they did what we thought they were going to do. Uh, so, yeah, they, they didn't really surprise us with uh, with anything. Um, you swapped shirts at the end of the game with Jude Bellingham. I imagine he wasn't in the uh, the best of moods. <laughs> it was a quiet night for him. I think he, he he looked a bit frustrated. His touch was off by his standards. But what was he like at the end of the game? Oh well, yeah, obviously it's uh, it's not easy for him. You know the the season he's had, um, the the star he became, uh, one of the top footballers in the world. Uh, He's gonna get judged on every touch he makes, every pass he makes, um, and he's gonna have bad games like everyone else, you know. But the consistency through the whole season—that's what you have to base him on. And uh, he maybe he's gonna be the key man in the knockout stages, and he's gonna be the hero for the England at the end, you know. Um, but yeah, I asked him for the shirt, and uh, I actually asked him at the halftime. We agreed after the game, <laughs> and uh, then he said, "Yeah, in the tunnel." Uh, then obviously we went to celebrate with the fans and um, one of my teammates, he went to him and just took him off him. And then I saw, OK, he's got the Bellingham shirt now. I'm not going to get it. And then in the interview area, I waited for uh, Stones and uh, yeah, John gave me his shirt. So I actually swapped with the John Stones. And then uh, one of our analytics, when we were up in the stands with the families, uh, he came to me and he said, I have a shirt for you. You agreed with the... Uh, player i said with who he said yeah it's a uh, jude's bellingham shirt and uh, so he remembered uh that's good that he promised me so i was really surprised you know i thought the moment was gone he gave it to someone else uh, <laughs> so yeah uh class act from him uh mm. that he didn't uh, forget about the small team from slovenia you know and uh obviously yeah it's gonna be a massive piece in my collection absolutely that's a nice touch from that's me, lovely yeah. Yeah. now and yeah, um, you've yeah. gone old school with the boots we often have players wanting to wear the very latest boots but you mm. you're wearing a pair from 2015 timmy you got a nike hyper venoms one with a great big tech on the top yeah, yeah, yeah. those are my favorites uh all time you know and a lot of people agree uh and nike really were ahead of the time with them back then. Uh, obviously, now you cannot really get them anymore, uh, mm. or they're more like collectors' uh, boot. Uh, the value is also so high, and it's really hard to find them in your size. I before the Euros, I managed to to find this pair online and uh, got in contact with the guy from England. Uh, he sent them over, and I was planning to to wear them in one game. Um, and yeah, English game was uh, the one I decided to to use them, and uh, 
they were lucky enough for us to to be successful at the end. I should say the uh, the Euros can be a, a shop window for players, and uh, I gather that you may be on the move this summer. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to be on the move this summer. Uh, 99% sure about that. Um, I've been in uh, my club now for four years in Slovenia. Uh, I've achieved everything in this league, you know, and it's um, it's not really a high level uh, compared to what we're playing now. And uh, yeah, there's been a lot of interest. Obviously, Euros help a lot. Uh, you put yourself in the shopping window and... Uh, I'm just doing my best, you know. Uh, I'm not really thinking about that. Uh, I'm letting my agent and the sport director from the club to to do their job. I'm just uh, focused on the game and then on to the next game, do my best. And uh, at the end, you know, we're going to see where we end up with. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm confident I can get a, I can get a good move now. But right. when you were here last That's time, good. you were at, uh, on loan at Swindon Town, Mansfield Town and Northampton Town. We've got Ipswich yeah. Town, they're back in the Premier League. So if you're looking to complete the set, maybe that's a possibility. You also yeah, played yeah, at yeah. Derby County with uh, our friend and colleague Darren Bent. And Bent, he told us yesterday he'd been keeping in touch with you. Actually, I said, uh, can you check whether uh, Shesko's fit or not? But I don't know if he did that in the end. <laughs> but anyway, um, what was Benty like as a teammate? Did you have a room with him, Timmy? No, I didn't have a room with him. Obviously, he was one of the older players. I was one of the uh, one of the youngsters. Mm. Uh, but he was a top man. You know, he's the one that put me into sneakers, uh, yeah, collecting yeah. the the shoes. Um, he gave me my first pair of sneakers uh, for free. Actually, uh, that's how he out. draws you in to collecting. He <laughs> exactly, gives you a pair yeah. for free, and then he he gets you. <laughs> but then you spend so much money after it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a pair for free is not really <laughs> worth it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, obviously, I I actually went to watch him when I was a little kid. Um, they played before. I think it was. Uh, before World Cup against uh, Japan in uh, Austria. Mm. And uh, we live near the border. So we went to uh, watch England against Japan and Dara Bente was playing there. And then after he was my teammate, yeah. So we kept in touch. Um, I'm listening to him, you know, in the, the radio shows and uh, his takes. Uh, so yeah, uh, he's a, a brilliant guy. Yeah, Maybe he'll be co-commentating he, on your next round. He's been doing a good job. Uh, so look to me, it's been great to talk to you. We really appreciate, appreciate you joining us there. Congratulations again to you and the team for qualifying and uh, we'll look out for you in the round of 16. All the best. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. What is this? Talksport.